Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we'll continue our discussion on heat maps. In the previous lecture we looked at heat maps and some of the attributes that we can pass to make the cells visible, meaning to show the value for that cell. We can change the key values by passing the Vmax and Vminimum attributes. Another thing we can do is change the color set. So the default color for our heat map looks like this. If we want, we can change the color or appearance of our heat map by using the color map attribute. Let's see an example. So SNS.heatmap, we'll pass our flight data set, and then we'll pass the color map attribute CMAP and set it to a different color. Let's say RDBU, that's one color map, and see what it looks like. So this is the RDBU. And let's set the annotation to true and FMT for string format, it will set it to D. Let's run it again. Okay, so this is the RDBU color map. Let's see some other color maps. There is one called summer, I think. Let's try that one, summer, run it. So this is the summer color map. Looks nice. So here are the keys. It ranges from green to yellowish color. The yellow ones are close to 600. Let's see some other color maps. I think there's one called winter underscore R. Run it. And this is what the winter R color map looks like. You have your keys on the right here. So you can use any color map that you want. So choose whichever one you like the most. Let's see one more color map. Cool, warm. Yeah, so a lot of color maps exist. Another thing we can do with our heat map is that we can make our color map appear at a specific value. So we can center our heat map at a specific value so that the color will, di will diverge from that specific value. For instance, let's say we want our color map or our data to be centered at maybe let's say June 1954. So we have 1954 here, June 1954. So here, right, 264, 264 passengers boarded in the flight on June 1954. If we want our color map to be centered at this data or at this data point or at this value here, June 1954, we can pass the center attribute, okay? So that our color map will be centered at, at that value and all the remaining values will diverge from the center. Let's see how we can do that. SNS.heatmap and then we'll be using the flight data set. And we'll pass the center attribute. And let's index June 1954 from our data set, from our flight data set. So flight and then we'll use the lock method and then pass June and then the year. 1954. If we run it now, and let's pass the annotation attribute, set it to true so that it's more clearer. And then we'll pass the string formatting to D, run it again. So if you take June 1954, so our data is centered at this value. Our color map is centered here, right? So here it's 264 around here. 
and then all the remaining colors diverge from the center. They diverge from 264. Then you have the key here, right? So values above 264, they go close to orange and then towards the red zone, whereas values lower than 264 go from light blue to darker blue. You see here? So the smaller the number of passengers, the darker the bluish color, right? So the values diverge from 264. Let's see another example. Let's consider the flight. Let's consider this flight, which is March 1959. So we'll use the same method. We'll pass the center attribute, paste it here, and then we'll need to index March 1959. So instead of June, let's change this to March 1959. Run it again. So if you go to March 1959, where is March 1959, right? So this is the center of our data set, of our color map. You see the color map is centered at March 1959 here. So around 406, right? It's the lightest color. And then all the number of passengers greater than 406 go towards the red spectrum, right? Whereas all values lower than 406 go towards the blue spectrum. And the lower the number of passengers, the smaller the number of passengers, the darker the color, right? Towards the blue side. See, the color, so that's how we can center our color map to a specific value or to a specific cell. Another thing we can do is if you don't want to show this color bar, color bar key, you can pass the color bar attribute and set it to false. Okay, let's copy this thing, paste it here, and we can pass the color bar attribute. Let's continue this on a new line, pass the color bar attribute and set it to false. In this case, we will not see this color bar key. Now we don't have the color bar key, okay? But we have all the values and we can do the same without these annotations also. Let me show you what I mean. It's said next that hit map, you can pass the flights data set and then simply set the color bar attribute to false. So we will just see our heat map without any color bar key and no values for each of our cells. But again, we can use the other attributes that we have seen. For instance, we can use the line width attribute and set it to, let's say 1.1. So that will separate one cell from another. Okay. So we can use a combination of one or more attributes for our heat map so that it can give us the information that we need. Okay, this is what I have for the lecture on heat maps. As we saw in the previous lecture in this lecture, heat maps are a very colorful way of obtaining information and we see clusters of matrices for our heat map. And by passing some additional attributes, we are able to grab as much information as we can from a heat map. Great. Thank you everyone. And see you at the next lecture.